morning. It's Joe and Lisa with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you're joining us today. It's kind of a nice morning. You know, the winds have died down a little bit, so we thought we'd uh, shoot a video. Yeah, then the winds blow. Yeah, then the wind blows. So it's been really dry and windy here. It's pretty tough. We're hopefully coming out of the dry season another week or two and um, start to get in some rain and things will look a lot better around here. Yeah, I'm going to say it's breezy. <laughs> the wind, when it's windy, is really strong. This is breezy. Well, enough talk about the weather. Let's jump into our subject matter, which is um, should you become an expat or not? Why do people leave their home country? And let me start out by saying I hate the word expatriate. Mm -hmm. um, e expat for short, but expatriate sounds like that you're no longer a patriot because you don't live in your home country. That's really a misnomer, and uh, I reject that notion completely. Yeah. Um, we still love our home country. We have big issues with it right now. We're really concerned for it, and we pray yeah. for our home country daily, but Ecuador is our home now. That's right. And we didn't leave our country um, because we hated it. Uh, we want to make that perfectly clear. You know, some things have been said, um, you know, on some of our comments lately. We want to reassure you that's not why we left the U.S. No. However, we're glad we're here now. Um, don't believe we could um, live in that environment anymore. No, and we realized that we were here a year and then we went back and and then we realized at that point that um, that just wasn't our place anymore. We We had really settled in here in the first year. Yeah, I think we really have. All right, well, let's jump right into it. Reason number one why you should consider becoming an expat. Um, <clears throat> well, let me say this. It will bring on a new and exciting stage of life for you. Yeah. Um, if you feel like you're stuck in a rut or you just, you just aren't comfortable with what's going on in your life, I promise this will be a new adventure. It is. It, it really changes. It, it adds a stage of your life that you probably never expected to have. Yeah. Especially if you're kind of in good enough health to really enjoy um, integrating into a new country. Absolutely. And I don't care, you know, what country it is, uh, Ecuador or yeah. Malaysia or Indonesia or, you know, um, uh, Portugal or Spain or Italy. Um, it's all going to be a really neat and unique adventure. And I highly encourage that. Um, to experience these adventures in your life while you're still able to. Definitely. I think that's the key. While you're still able, make that change so that you can do something more exciting at the end stage of life. Worst thing I can imagine is um, growing old in the United States these days and yeah. sitting in a nursing home, eating away the last pennies that you, your family has. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not my way. Um, no, I, that, that's not living, that's existing. Existing, yeah, we decided we want to live out the remaining years and have exciting adventures and, and, and have a lot of fun. So this is why we did this. All that's right. That's one of our reasons. That's one of our reasons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, <clears throat> number two. Learn a new language. Yeah, if you're thinking about you know learning languages, there's nothing better than immersing yourself in that country mm -hmm. uh, that speaks that language because it will force you to learn it faster. It will, and it's not to say you're gonna be super proficient or um, can carry on you know, a super intellectual conversation, but you can learn enough to get by. You can learn enough to eat in a restaurant and have um, simple conversations with new friends that you're gonna make. We always say here in Ecuador, learn restaurant Spanish first. That's right. You don't wanna starve. No. So yeah, I you know that's definitely a, whatever you know whatever your home country is, um, you might find countries that also speak your language, mm -hmm. um, and and that's all well and good, but it's really good to learn the native language of where you plan to live. Yeah, and I will say there's a lot more English here now. They they do teach it in the schools, and it's kind of funny you'll you'll be somewhere and you're trying to stumble through your Spanish, and the person that you're talking to says do you know English? And so they want to practice their English. You want to practice your Spanish. So you meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think growing up in the United States, 
um, kind of spoils a lot of people because very few Americans are bilingual or multilingual. Mm -hmm. And in other countries, that's pretty much a normal thing to be multilingual. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so reason number three, a new job. You can get a job working overseas depending on where you go. Um, here, because of this particular country, it's a lot harder to actually get a job here unless you're doing something online. And there are a lot of people that work online. That's true. And so the ability to work online um, in whatever country you might be considering is going to be huge. Yeah. Uh, that's your greatest potential. And so I think in getting a new job, you know, um, that you worked in a foreign country, I think that actually looks good on your resume. Mm -hmm. um, it tells, you know, future employers that you're willing to strike out and take risks and um, new adventures, you know, et cetera. And it shows a lot of character, I think. Yeah, and I won't say you can't get a job here because I think we, I know of one person that has, um, that speaks fluent Spanish and she did get a job, I think up in Quito. Yeah, see. So. Okay, reason number four. Maybe you want to study abroad. Um, so if you want to study abroad or you have family abroad, That'd be a great reason to become an expat and uh, mm -hmm. go to another country to, you know, take advantage of some uh, academic opportunities. True. Whether you do it in a school or you just like to study the culture or the language or anything else, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of people who come to the United States to study there from other countries. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Americans do go to places like England, um, you know, London. Yep. things like that to study there. Uh, but man, wouldn't it be great to go to a country where you don't speak the language, have to learn that language and study in that country, mm -hmm. give you a whole new challenge to life, I think. Yeah, definitely. All right, we're at reason number five. five. Okay. Uh, Living in a new country. Yeah, just as we said at the beginning, being immersed in a new country and learning new cultures, experiencing the whole... Um, the whole different personality of a country is really unique. Yeah, and I think it's important. Don't go to another country and try to bring all your baggage with you. Um, definitely immerse yourself in the culture of the country you're going to. Otherwise, why would you go? I think, you know, some people that watch our videos um, become a little bit insulted because we've left the U.S. and they they still believe the U.S. is the greatest country on the face of the planet. When you live in other countries for a short time or a long time, you start to realize that other countries have such great value to them as well. And so um, over time, you lose some of that what we call American mindset. Um, yeah, I think you really need to put all, wherever you go, you need to put everything on the same playing field. Um, they may not be as technology, you know, advanced in technology here where we are up in Quito. I'm sure they're, they do great, but um, that's okay. It's a different way of life. It's a very simple way of life. If you like um, high tech and big cities, if you came to Ecuador, Quito would be a better place for you. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, we. I love to tell the story and I've told it in other videos about us when we bought our first car of having to go and have it registered. They call it the matriculation process. So, you know, in our in Texas, we would just go in, take a number, boom, you're out in 15, 20 minutes. Here, it's a two-day process. There are 10 different people involved in that process. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at that when you're an American new to this country, and you kind of think to yourself, wow, this is a, a terrible process. And then the more and more you think about it, you go, you know what? Here's 10 people that have a job in this country, and that's yeah. a wonderful thing. So when you start to slow down and look at it from their perspective, and um, you go, you know, this is not such a bad thing. Yeah, and, and the word terrible is more of it's not efficient. I mean, in the U.S., you work jobs where your goal is to be as efficient as you can be, um, to make things move along as fast as you can move them. Not so much here, and that's okay. Yeah. Not that everything's inefficient here. That's not what we're saying no. at all. But 
some things definitely are not as efficient as what we're used to, mm -hmm. and you just got to go with the flow. They're just different, and that's okay. Yeah, that's it's right. It's all good. Number six. Okay, so this is kind of a controversial one, but you know, maybe you don't, uh, maybe you want to move to another country because of the way it's run. Mm -hmm. So um, moving to another country because of the way it's run, you may not particularly like how your home country is being run, mm -hmm. and you may, may want to try a different country that you think is run better, and I promise that'll be an experience. <laughs> <laughs> It is an experience, but keep in mind when you're making that transition, it is going to be different and you just have to embrace the changes. No country is perfect. Um, they're all run by imperfect people and every political system has its problems. Um, the country we live in is no exception. Um, and, you know, we're hopeful Ecuador is going to work through some of its problems. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I still feel like we made a great decision here. Yeah, I mean, you'll go through days and you go, ooh, that's not good. And then the next day you'll go and it's like, ooh, I really appreciate the way they do this. And, and it's just, uh, it's different. You just have to roll with it. Yeah. All right, so number seven. So number seven is cost savings. Um, it can be a cost savings to live in another country. Um, depending on your home country. Depending on where you're coming from, where you're going to. Yeah, so coming from the U.S. to here, significant savings. You know, mm -hmm. I would say it's our cost of living is maybe 10% of what it is in the U.S. Oh, yeah. And so, um, you know, I think, uh, a shout out to JP and Amelia, I think on their channel, on one of their videos, they talked about um, their debt load in the United States and how they weren't overcoming it mm -hmm. by moving to Ecuador they were able to pay off all their debts in the U.S. because they're making a U.S. salary working from home and able to uh, just knock a hole in those debts real quick. So we didn't have any debts when we came here, but some people do. Mm -hmm. And so by moving to a, a country where the cost of living is so much cheaper, you can save money. You really can. And uh, my mom's here. She's just on a, a pension. And she's she's actually saving money. I don't think she's saved this much money in the U.S., but the cost is a lot less. And that's just how we live. You can come here and spend it all. Sure. I mean... <laughs> you can do that anywhere in the world. So you fly just, to Galapagos all the time. and Oh, yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there is a, a cost savings that's available by moving to other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you know, you go to some of the... Um, uh, countries like Indonesia, um, things are really cheap. Malaysia, things are really cheap. You know, all of your uh, health care is going to be cheap in these other countries. And um, so you're able to save money, pay off debt, or maybe put money toward retirement that you weren't able to do in your home country. That's true. That's important. That is very true. All right, where are we at? Number, number eight. Number eight, friends. Yeah. What is number eight? Lifelong friends. Yeah, building lifelong relationships. So, um, you know, I have to say that leaving your home country and becoming an expat, um, I would not expect everybody to embrace that idea for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people are going to look at you and shake their heads and go, what's wrong with you? You know, um, you hate us that bad. You have to get away from us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's not the case at all. But people have a hard time sometimes understanding why you want to move to another country. Yeah. And some of those relationships that you've had in your home country are going to be lost. Um, or let me just say they get put on the back burner for some reason. Um, so you're going to develop new and exciting relationships in a new country. Lifelong friendships. And you bond with people abroad differently than you do in the States. Um, you may not have that much in common, but they may just be very interesting. Um, you make different different relationships differently here. It's just um, hard to explain. I would say there's something, you know, to the idea that uh, we are a bit of kindred spirits, those of us who live in other countries and travel. Mm. Um, at the same time, in the U.S., in, your, in our comfort zone there, um, we may only socialize with a certain type of people just because sure. that's what's in our people group, if you will. And here you're kind of forced to socialize outside that box. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and maybe um, meet new people that you wouldn't normally um, have relationships with. And so there is a somewhat a broadening of your ideas in doing that. Well, and you're going to come across people that probably in your home country, you may never have had an opportunity to come across those types exactly. of people. Exactly. I will say here in Vilcabamba, I don't know how many countries are represented, but you know we know Russians, Germans, Polish people, um, Italians, French, Asian. uh, Asians, uh, man, you name it, they're here. Um, it's reflected in our restaurants in town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, a lot of opportunity for that. And so, you know, a lot of sharing of ideas. Mm. And I have to say, not everyone's ideas do we agree with. And certain, you know, people groups probably aren't our group. But, you know, having that opportunity uh, for you may be a great plan. Yeah, and you really talk about your home country a little bit and when you come across a situation and you talk to somebody from another country, they're gonna give you a completely different perspective than what you have coming from where you lived. And it's kind of nice. Yeah, so the the friendships that we've made here um, have been fantastic. Now, mm. I, I'll tell you that sometimes, as anywhere that you live, friendships can struggle. Um, you're gonna find those people that are never gonna be in your inner circle and not ever going to be real close friends, mm -hmm. but then you're going to find some people that you're just going to bring into your little inner family, so to speak. And we've done that here. We've got some great, yeah. you know who you are out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, and unfortunately, even here, uh, some of those friendships, you know, some of these people decide to leave our area. And, and that's always, you know, hard because you become so close to them and they've made a decision to move on to another area. And that's tough, but um, that happens everywhere. It does, but it's it's a little different here because when somebody's moving to a different area, you celebrate with them. I mean, you really, really, from the deepest part of your heart, you love them and you wish the best for them and hope that they can find what we found. I mean, we found yeah. our space and everybody needs to find their space and one size does not fit all. So definitely it's good to move around. Yeah, and I think, you know, we celebrate for them because um, they're having an, an enriching, enrichment experience. You know, yeah. they're just, they're moving to another area and becoming enriched in different ways, and that's all good. It's all good. We're at number nine. Discover yourself. I still don't know who I am. <laughs> no, there, there is something to that. I think in oh, yeah. that, you know, being presented with these new challenges and learning languages and new people and new cultures, um, you really have to dig down and figure out who you are. If you haven't already done that in life, if you're younger, um, it'll really make you think about what's important to you and, um, and who you want to be as a person, how you want to be remembered. Definitely all of that. And it just, it really makes you stop. And all those things you took for granted in the States or wherever you came from, you look at them differently when you're here. Um, you know, it's just, it's different. And you really find how well you can get along without all those things, the attachments that you had and in, in wherever you came from. Yeah, and you'll, you'll uncover hidden talents, you know. You do um, have to stay busy. Yeah, you got to stay busy. We uncovered this, what I guess you can call it a talent of taking pictures and being on YouTube and, doing all that. So, yeah, um, you know, it uncovered different hobbies for us. Takes hobbies to a whole new level. Whole new level, yeah. Okay, number 10. One of the reasons you might move to a new country and become an expat is for a better climate. Boy, that's us. It really is. And in, in the last, I don't know, month, we keep hearing about triple digits in, in Texas, where we're from. Um, I really like the climate here. Once you listen to the, the forecast from where you came from, if you moved because of climate, then the wind here is not so bad. <laughs> yeah, and so the wind here is just for a short period of the year. But, it is. You know, our friends and family in Texas are, I think, going on seven weeks of 100 degree plus temperatures. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. I mean, that's terrible. This is what I had to deal with on a daily basis when we lived there. 
and you want to go from the air conditioner of the car right into the air conditioner of the house, not a good life, um, no. at least not for me. I had a heat stroke several times on the farm, um, made you much more susceptible to it. Mm. Not good for your organs, by the way. Um, so don't get heat stroke out there in Texas. Yeah. Um, we have uh, friends and family telling us their chickens are dying yeah. um, from the heat. Uh, they're worried about other animals. You know, our son tells you they have to take the dogs out for walks really late in the evening and early, you know, early in the morning. Yeah, got to have a lot of water available. Mm. You know, people are running misters for their animals and stuff. So yeah, you know, that mm. was a big reason for us was to get into a better climate. Man, did we find it. Yeah, for us, this works. I mean, it really, really does. And one of the things we asked um, Jose Abad, our taxi driver, when we got here is, why do you think people live longer? And one of his first responses was climate. So yeah. not having the extremes in the climate, you don't have the, and from Texas, we had that. We extreme heat to extreme cold. And uh, it does, it really wears on your body. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, those extremes really play a role in health. Mm. And uh, certainly they did in my health. And, you know, we have um, friends that live all across the United States in different climates, uh, you know, very snowy, frigid kind of stuff. And all the way to Florida. We have friends in Florida. You know who you are. <laughs> and so shout out to them. So Florida, you know, a lot of humidity, a lot of heat. Um, but people love it there, but it's just yeah. not for us. Yeah. No, it's, it's, we're, we found our spot. We're happy. Yeah. And so, and, and maybe, you know, you like being by the beach where it's warmer and you want to be in a climate where it's, it's more tropical. Um, that's certainly available in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever you want, it's out there. I promise you. It is. It is. You just have to spend the time to look around. Yeah. Experiencing new climates, a big one. So, um, I hope you consider all 10 of these items and, why you might think about becoming an expat. And I prefer it to be called a world journey person, maybe. Adventurer. Rather than adventurer, yeah. We said you always have to have the pioneering spirit to do this. I think you really do, especially if you really let go of what you left and embrace where you go. Yeah, I think so. I told somebody the other day, you got to be... Um, Flexible. I guess it was Matt Flynn said, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we feel like a Romanian gymnast now. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Matt and Kate of Flynn's on the fly. So, um, yeah, I mean, the flexibility of it is, is one thing, but I think that you have to uh, really consider whether you're going to be cut out for this. Mm -hmm. I think that there's reasons not to do it, um, but there's certainly some good reasons to do it. Uh, not everybody has the personality type to take this adventure on, um, but we are so happy we did. And if you have questions about our journey, reach out to us. Uh, we All we can do is give you our opinions on it. And uh, there's lots of information on the internet, by the way. Uh, there's probably a thousand websites with uh, information about becoming an expat. So we'll help you any way that we can. Reach out, give us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Ciao for now.